So in this video, we'll work an example where we solve a right triangle. The, what, what it means to solve a triangle is that you find all of the side lengths and angles that are not given up front. So we're given a right triangle whose two short sides have length 7 and 15, and we're asked to find the other sides and the angles. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and draw a triangle. I'm not going to worry about the scale being right. I'll just kind of draw, let the auto feature fill it in for me. I'll say this is a, a right triangle. Um, okay, after I struggle with the interface a little bit. Okay, so there's a right triangle. These short sides are 7 and 15. And, you know, the scale's not quite right. Uh, this height is not really, doesn't look like double, double-ish the bottom, but whatever. We won't worry about that. It's it's good enough for what we're working on. Uh, so right away, I can find the hypotenuse of the Pythagorean theorem, but let's go ahead and do that last. Let's focus on the uh, trigonometric part of it, not the algebra part. So I need to find this angle here and this angle here. We're given that this is a right triangle, so we're given a lot of the angles up front. Um, there's probably a couple ways to start this, but one way is to say, let's call this angle, uh, let's call it alpha. We have to label it something, okay? Now, alpha is related to these other two sides by the tangent function, right? The um, Typically, we were um, defining trig functions based on a unit circle approach, so we were defining them based on ratios of components of a unit circle, the x, r, uh, the x, y, and r values. So tangent is y over x. In this case, though, we'll say tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is really equivalent. You might remember that format from high school. Um, and if not, we'll do examples and become familiar from these videos. So this 7 is opposite the alpha. It is the angle that is opposite to it. It's across the middle of the triangle, right? This 15, this is adjacent. It's right next to the alpha, and it's not the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is also next to the alpha, but it's named hypotenuse. We don't need to name anything else. So the hypo uh, hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. The adjacent is the side directly next to the alpha, but not the hypotenuse, and the opposite is the other one, basically, the one that is across the middle of the triangle. So tangent of alpha, this is the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, I'm going to abbreviate there. Make it a little bit neater. Okay, so in this case, uh, tangent alpha is 7 over 15. Okay, so I can say that alpha equals tangent inverse of 7 over 15. Or if you like, uh, you can say arc tangent. If, you, if I could write a, a 5, we'll go with that. Good enough. Let's make a note off to the side. Or if we want arc tangent. Some, some books will refer to this using slightly different notation. Okay, so um, I want to point out that this uh, number we found, tangent inverse of 7 over, 7 over 15, this is just a number. This is a number in precisely the same way that 5 is a number. They're each a symbol or set of symbols that represents a quantity. Now, 5 is simpler. You can you know, count to it on your hand. Can you count to tangent inverse of 7 over 15 on your hand? Well, no, it's not a counting number. It's more complicated, but it is just a number. So sometimes that's your answer. We don't got to do anything with it. But in this chapter, we're going to be focusing on application problems. And usually with an application problem, we do want a decimal approximation. So let's go ahead and do that for this one. How many degrees is that? Uh, in the last video, we talked about radians versus degrees. So I want to make sure that my calculator is in degrees mode. And then I will work out that this is 25.017 degrees, approximately. Um, the calculator actually shows me uh, 25.0168938. So uh, 25.016, but the next digit is an 8, so I round up to 7. Also, you should always use this sort of uh, wavy equal sign whenever you're doing a decimal approximation because it signals to whoever's reading it, hey, I use a calculator. This is not exact. This is an approximation. And you should always do that when you are approximating. Sometimes that's an important distinction, especially chemistry, physics, engineering. You need to, you need to say when you're rounding things. So we found alpha, good job. Um, so now we need to find this other angle. And I'm gonna go ahead and call it beta. Uh, theta would work, but whatever. Let's use alpha and beta for the most part throughout this section. So one way to do this would be to notice, oh, 
15 is opposite of beta, and 17 is adjacent to beta. So tangent of beta is 15 over 7. I could totally do that, and that would work out fine. However, I don't need to do that much work. Um, since I know this angle, and I know this angle, right, that means I can work out what beta is, because the three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So alpha plus beta, let's make it a neat beta, that's pretty good, uh, plus 90 degrees, that's the right angle, that's going to be 180. So if I subtract 90 on both sides, I'll have alpha plus beta equals 90 degrees, and then I can subtract alpha on both sides. So beta, oops, let's make that neat, bit. Beta fine, equals uh, 90 degrees minus alpha. Now that's approximately 90 degrees minus 25.017 degrees. And that's equal to, I'll get my calculator back out, and I will do, um, subtract that from 90, I get 64.983. So there is my approximation for beta. And you might ask, well, hold on, what was what was the exact value of beta? Like, if I wanted to say, without rounding, what was it? Well, that would be 90 degrees minus tangent inverse of 7 over 15. It's kind of messy, but that's what it is. That is the exact value. Um, but again, in these application problems, we'll typically not worry too much about exact values. I do want... Um, what I don't want to do is round things repeatedly. So, for example, if I use my calculator and, um, give me a second. Yeah. If I rounded this in the calculator and got a decimal approximation for 7 over 15, and then I use the calculator to apply this as a second step, then I'm plugging a rounded number into a function, and that can enhance the um, error involved in rounding. It can make your number off by more. So generally it's preferred to don't use the calculator until the last step when you're calculating a, a number. And especially what might even be a good idea is when I go to find alpha, uh, beta rather, when I go to find beta, don't use the 25.017. Instead, type this entire thing into the calculator, let the calculator handle all the decimals for you. So it'll keep 10 or 15 decimal places and give you as much precision as it's capable of doing that might be better. Um, if you are in physics or chemistry or engineering, you will take a course that involves error analysis at some point, and you'll you'll learn all about how error propagation works. Um, Cal 1, generally, um, it, it, there's a section that involves um, this kind of thing where you might uh, examine some basic concepts on error propagation. So you have that to look, to look forward to next semester. Anyway, so... We found alpha, we found beta. Okay, cool. Now we need the hypotenuse, which again is not that hard. It's just Pythagorean theorem. So um, I'm going to call this uh, C, you know, A squared, B squared, C squared. So uh, 7 squared plus 15 squared equals C squared. So was that 49? Oops. 49 plus 225 equals C squared. So was that 274? equals c squared. So uh, the square root of 274 is the value of c. So we found alpha, we found beta, we found c. So we've solved the triangle, we found all the features that we were not given.